Is it too early to be DIYing for Halloween? Dollar Tree doesn't think so. They've got all their DIY Halloween decor stuff out. And boy, oh boy, is there a lot of fun new items this year. I'm going to get the getting while the getting is good. And I'm bringing to you some Halloween DIYs. Not one, not two, but four amazing Halloween DIYs for 2022 that I think you are absolutely gonna love that are budget friendly and I'm gonna go so far as to say that these are just about 100% Dollar Tree DIYs. I can't wait to show you what I've come up with so I'm gonna quit my gabbing, let's jump into it and let's do some holiday Halloween DIYing on a budget because that's what we do here. Let's get to it. is today's KB Creations Crafter of the Day. You'll want to stick around to the end of the video to see if it's your creation that's being featured in today's video. Alrighty, jumping on into these DIYs, I'm going to start this first one off with one of these round blank plaques. Thank goodness Crafter Square got smart and came out with these because it's a blank canvas. But with this blank canvas comes these pesky holes that you all know I don't like. So I'm gonna take some spackling. This is a quick dry spackling. So as soon as this pink turns to white, it is good and dry. You're free to sand it just like I did here. I initially thought that I was gonna go the route of painting this plaque. That was why I filled in those pesky holes, but then decided to go a different route. So to this plaque, I am going to add a nice generous coat of some Mod Podge because I'm gonna add some burlap to it. This is a burlap that you can get at just about any crap store, any Walmart, and you can buy it by the yard. That's what I like to do because I've noticed that Dollar Tree hasn't had it in stock lately. Once I lay that burlap down onto my plaque, I am gonna go in with a second coat of Mod Podge to really adhere it down and stiffen up that burlap because by stiffening up that burlap, it's gonna keep it from fraying when we cut off the excess burlap. It is best to wait until that Mod Podge and burlap are fully dry before you cut off the excess burlap. The best way to do that is to use one of these razors here with a fresh blade. Using the plaque itself as a guide, you're gonna get some nice, clean, perfect edges that are free of fraying. Using some of Waverly's chalk paint in the color of maize. I'm gonna give this burlap a good coating of this paint. This is hands down one of my favorite yellows. I feel like a good yellow is hard to come by. And well, this isn't too bright, this isn't too dark, it's a very subtle yellow, and well, I just love it. So there is my Waverly Maze uh, tangent. Anyway, why am I painting this burlap when I could have just painted the plaque itself yellow? Well, because I am a firm believer that adding texture to a DIY makes a huge difference. I feel like adding texture kind of fine tunes a DIY, takes it to an another level. And so that's why I like to do it. If you don't want to add texture, you can skip this burlap part and just go straight to the painting your plaque with maize, if that's the yellow you want to use. There is a theme to these DIYs, these Halloween DIYs that I'm bringing to you today, and it is that of the candy corn theme. But with that, I felt like I needed to incorporate some black because black is kind of the signature color for Halloween, and I feel like it's gonna add that extra oomph that these DIYs need. So the best way I felt to incorporate the black into this DIY was through Stitching, yes, my infamous stitching. I love stitching. Now, this is an optional part of this DIY. If stitching isn't for you, I say don't do it, but stitching is definitely for me. I feel like it finishes off the DIY nicely, and so, yes, I add it to my DIYs. A lot of them, in fact. To this DIY, I will be using one of these galvanized welcome words. Can I just tell you how happy I am that there are no more holes in these metal words? I'm gonna be painting this with some of Hello Hobby's pumpkin orange. And to this orange, I'm gonna add just a bit of this Hello Hobby brown, just to kind of mute it up a bit and make it a bit more rustic. 
I'm gonna say the easiest way to paint any of these galvanized words or pieces from Dollar Tree is to use a sponge dabber and be generous with your paint. You're gonna get nice full coverage in just about one to two coats versus using a paintbrush. You're gonna get those brush strokes and it's gonna take several coats to achieve full coverage. So trust me when I say use a sponge dabber, you'll be a happy camper and it's gonna get the job done in just a couple of seconds. Once I got a couple of good coats of the orange on, I did go in and add some stitching, surprise, surprise, to the back of this. I'm gonna add some of these wood square beads that you can get at Dollar Tree by Crafter Square. Now these are a smaller bead. They're gonna fit perfect on the back of these. Why am I putting these beads on the back of this word? Because I wanna elevate this word up off the plaque and give it some dimension. Again, this is another one of those things when adding dimension along with texture, it really takes your DIY to the next level. Switching gears, I'm using one of these new pumpkins. This is a galvanized pumpkin. This is new to Dollar Tree this year. I am loving all these fun new galvanized pieces that Crafter Square is adding to the holiday lines. These have holes, pesky holes. I don't want holes in them. Easy fix. I'm going to take just a piece of tape. I'm using masking tape. I'm going to cover the holes on the back side of the plaque. Whichever side is the back side to you. This is the back side for me. And like I said, because this is a themed project, you're gonna see some repetition in this. This pumpkin, this is the perfect orange for this pumpkin. Now you will see that as I dab the paint on, because of where I put the tape, it's going to paint the tape in turn, filling in the hole somewhat with paint, making it less noticeable. Kind of a cool little hack there. And repeat. And on the back of this piece as well, I am going to add some of Dollar Tree's wooden cubes, again, because I am going for dimension for this piece. Right now, you can find these cool orange LED lights. They've got them in orange, green, and purple. These are battery operated, so just by simply using two AA, yeah, these are AA batteries, and again, you can get those at Dollar Tree as well. Your lights are gonna work you don't need a plug which is the best part of using these that means that we can add these to my diy but first i like to make sure that they work before i add them to any piece so that way i don't have to take them off to this piece i thought it would be fun to add these led lights to what would be a jack-o-lantern a pumpkin typically has a candle or a light in it so why shouldn't this one too so at the top of each of these triangle eyes i thought i would just put a light dot of glue now my glue gun is on low temperature it is not on high temperature and these led lights kind of have a wax coating around the bulb itself which makes it perfect for adding hot glue because it's not going to damage the light I do suggest putting just a dot of low temperature hot glue right in that area just to hold it in place. And I did that using the whole strand, adding lights to each of the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. How fun is that? So it's not only dimensional, but it lights up. What a fun feature to add to a piece like this. My favorite part of every DIY, finally putting it together, all the pieces that we've DIY'd, to then make one really amazing piece. To that plaque, yep, my pumpkin and my welcome word are just going to be hot glued onto this. Onto the back of this plaque, I'm just gonna hot glue the battery box on, allowing me the capability of still changing the battery in and out. Now, because there really is no way around hiding the wiring to the LED lights, unless you wanna drill a hole in the plaque, maybe where the pumpkin is. For the most part, I think not a lot of people are gonna do that. And so I just decided to kind of paint it the same color as my plaque, disguising it. This is the perfect way to add some black to this DIY. So I'm gonna add a black raffia bow instead of a twine bow. And on the back side, because this is going to be one DIY that I add to my Halloween ladder, 
I'm gonna use, again, the black raffia as a hanger just by gluing it onto the back of the plaque. With that, look at that, the top DIY for my porch decor ladder. I am loving this. I didn't take pictures at night, but I did bring it in the house where it was dark and you can see just how fun those lights are and what they add to the piece itself. Next up, dug into my craft stash of Dollar Tree plaques. This is a very old one. It really is just for the shape. You can see that I filled in the holes because with this plaque, I am painting it and yes, I don't want holes in it. So with this plaque, I am going with just a basic black matte chalk paint. This one is by Waverly and I'm gonna give this a good couple coats of that paint. And along with that plaque for this DIY, I'm gonna be using this trick or treat word plaque. These are so fun and just DIYing them is easy to do once you fill in, yes, those holes, those pesky, pesky holes. Did I tell you what the theme of these DIYs is? Of course I did. It's candy corn theme, which means the colors are white, orange, and yellow. And so to this plaque, I'm gonna do trick in white, because that's the top color of a candy corn, isn't it? Of course it is. And in the center there, I went with the rustic orange where that footage is. I'm not quite sure, but you see what I'm doing here. And at the bottom, I'm gonna go in with that maize yellow. I did, I did stitching on this, and let me just tell you, it took me an hour to do. Now, if you wanna use a Sharpie to do the stitching, you can, might be easier than paint, but since I had the paint out and I've got a paintbrush, I just went that route to the back of this sign. Yep, you see what I'm doing. I'm adding some of those handy wood blocks because why? Yes, we are going to make this piece dimensional as well. And those wood blocks, because they tend to show, I did paint them the same color as the plaque itself, which was black just to kind of disguise them so not much attention is drawn to them. I will tell you that after I got this painted, I did just put some glue on these wood blocks and glued it to the black plaque here. I don't know what happened to the footage there. I'm gonna blame it on COVID. I still have COVID brain, but it was really basic and you can see the end result. It is stinking adorable. The last DIY for this plaque, but not the last one for this video, I'm gonna be using these fun wall decor pieces. Three come on a set. I wanted to use two of the pumpkins and one of the skulls for this. These again, would you look at the amount of holes on these? Now, if I sound like a broken record, it's probably because I am, but if you were just to paint these pieces without filling it in, it's going to look unfinished. It's going to look like these pieces are missing something. And so I do suggest filling in the holes. It is worth taking the time to do that because it really is going to make your piece look a bit more finished and a bit more high end. And so, yes, filling these in. And when I fill in my pieces, I really fill them in the night before the day I'm gonna DIY. So that way when I go to sit down and DIY, I can just keep moving and painting and creating and not waiting for spackling to dry. So with these, yep, the skull is gonna get a good coating of some white chalk paint. And my word, is it strike three and I'm out yet? Wow, my camera was really zoomed in on this. But nonetheless, you can see that I painted both those adorable pumpkins my rustic orange. And heck, since I'm on a roll, let me just show you the raffia that I'm using that I've already used in the previous DIYs. This is a bundle that you can get at just about any craft store. You can even find it sometimes at Target in their bins, which is a great buy. I'm gonna use this to make a banner, the banner, the hanging banners that I like to make and attach my skull and pumpkins to. And of course, you can see the repetition. I am a creature of habit. Each of these pieces has the stitching because I feel like without it, it would have just been a white skull and it didn't add any character to it. But with that stitching, yes, it finishes it off perfectly. I tell you, I'm determined to convert some of you to stitchers, those of you who are non-stitchers. And to the back of these pieces, oh yes, they needed lights too in each of the eyes. And because these LED 
lights come with 10 lights. It was perfect to add to these. I just kind of disguised the rest of the lights that I didn't need, adding more glow to this piece. But what a fun way to add lighting to these, right? To each of the eyes. And with that, our third and final DIY for the ladder. And how cute is this? Again, this is the piece during the day. And look at how it illuminates at night. Oh my goodness. Now with this piece, I did attach the battery pack to the ladder itself with just some Velcro. And here we have it. Such a fun decor piece, this rustic ladder. I love it because it is an interchangeable decor piece, allowing me the capability of interchanging each of the DIYs, each of the three DIYs on this ladder for each of the holidays, the seasons, or the non-holidays and seasons. Here it is during the day, and this is what it looks like lit up at night, or in the dark, because it wasn't night. But you see it, isn't it adorable? I love this piece. How about this cute wood skeleton for the next DIY? It's held together with these metal rings, so I'm gonna remove them because I don't need them. My word, seriously, would you look at all the holes that are in this skeleton? They've gotta be filled in, so of course I'm gonna do it. It's gonna make it look better, I promise. I know, repeat, repeat, repeat. I will tell you the next morning when all that speckling was dry, I had a few pieces that needed some sanding like this one. But it is so worth it because look at already, without it even being painted, how much better this piece looks because it's not so busy with all of the holes. You can actually see the skeleton for the skeleton itself, which is what I want. This piece and all of the pieces are gonna get a good coating with just some basic white chalk paint. I'm using Waverly's. Dollar Tree has felt rolls. These felt rolls, they're a fairly decent size. It's 11 and three quarter inches wide by 48 inches long. Now, is this the best quality of felt? I'd say not, but I'm gonna use it anyway because it works perfect for this. At the top of the felt here, I'm gonna fold it over about two inches and I'm gonna glue that flap down. This is going to give us a pocket. Now when you glue it down, you don't wanna glue the sides down because we're making a pocket. You just wanna glue the flap down itself so it stays folded. Dollar Tree's got these heavy duty rubber mats. And when I say heavy duty, they've got some weight behind them which makes it perfect for this DIY because I am making a Halloween garden banner. When I don't add weight to my garden banner, they tend to flop around in the wind and they don't always set nicely when they're hanging. By adding a bit of weight to the garden banner itself, it is going to actually stop it from flopping around in the wind and it's gonna, I guess, hold its shape a bit better. This is the inside of the banner, which is the inside of the felt. So I'm just gonna hot glue this rubber mat to the felt itself. Once I've got the rubber mat glued down, I'm gonna cover it up with more felt and I'm gonna kind of sandwich it in with this 48 inch piece of felt that we have. I'm gonna lay the felt right on over and I'm gonna hot glue it on the top and the sides still leaving the pocket there at the top so we can put our garden banner on the rod itself. To the front of my felt, well, that's where this adorable skeleton is gonna go. Now the front of your felt banner is the front that is seamless. The back should have where the two, I guess, ends of the felt meet and the front will be seamless, giving you a blank canvas to decorate your banner. And so in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and add my skeleton and just hot glue it to my banner. Now, if you're worried about hot glue holding up in your elements, then use a wood glue or Aileen's tacky glue. It'll just take a bit longer for it to dry, but it'll get the job done. I'm not super worried about whether or not the hot glue is gonna hold up or not because I am using a high temperature hot glue and the temperatures where I live don't reach that hot to melt my hot glue or soften it up. 
so I should be good to go. If you're using a low temperature glue gun, then you're gonna wanna use a different glue and that's where I would be concerned about whether or not your pieces are gonna hold up in the heat or not. I can't help it. I tried not to add stitching to this, but the more I looked at this banner, it just didn't feel finished and it didn't, I guess, go in with the rest of my pieces. So with my chalk paint, I'm gonna add some stitching to my felt as well. I picked up some of these Halloween metal words, Haunted, Spooky, and Beware. I thought the perfect one for this DIY would be Haunted. And while this Haunted is going to get a nice couple coats of white chalk paint using my sponge dabber. This Haunted, it's gonna go right up here at the top, just finishing this piece off. I am absolutely in love with this piece. Again, I think it's such a fun piece. It kind of emulates an x-ray and that really was the look that I was going for. I say get creative, make it your own, and why not do some Halloween DIY and porch decor? I've never had it before and I think this is a fun addition to it. Who is today's KB Creations Crafter of the Day? It's going out to Delia Ann Davis, who's bringing to us her recreation of my Dollar Tree DIY hand soap and cream dispenser. Delia, I am loving your spin and your twist on this recreation. Thank you for sharing it with us today. Now, how fun are those DIYs? They were quick, they were easy, they were budget friendly, and boy oh boy, how fun were they with those lights added to them. I just love it. And I love my skeleton x-ray garden banner, cause why not? Is it too early to display Halloween decor? I'm gonna say so. I will tell you that as I was taking pictures of these decor pieces, my neighbor came out of his garage and he was like, Kelly, is it time for Halloween already? And I said, it's not Nick, but you know what? I gotta get these DIYs out to my subscribers while Dollar Tree has the items that they need to do them. Because if I wait too much longer, you know how Dollar Tree is. They don't always restock their holiday items. And so if it's at Dollar Tree now, I'm gonna bring you these DIYs while this stuff is there. So that way you too can do these DIYs if you saw one today that you liked. Maybe you saw two, three, maybe four that you liked and you're gonna do them too. I hope you all enjoyed today's Dollar Tree Halloween DIYs. Please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and let's get this video to 5,000 likes. Because like I always say, each and every one of your thumbs up and those comments that you do leave down below, well, they really do help my channel to grow. And it helps YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Until next time, everybody. I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget. Stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy, but most of all, stay positive, please. And bye for now, everybody.